be where I'm going to give you the specific points. Because if I just say find the rate of change here, again, because the rate of change is not the same between every set of points like it is with a linear function, you have to be given some sort of criteria on how to find that average rate of change. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do these two red points that I have here. Um, and so what this is, is we are finding the average rate of change for when x is 0 and when x is negative 1. Well, when x is 0, y is also 0. And when x is negative 1, y is negative 3. So there's two ways you can do this. One way is you can actually count rise over run, right? Difference of your y's over your x's. So I'm going up 3, and then I'm going over 1. So we know the rate of change is 3. Or we can use our slope formula. Remember y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so when you use that formula, um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 gives us negative 3 over negative 1, which is positive 3. So either way you look at it, the rate of change between these two points is 3. And just to show you it's not the same, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, just to show you that it's not the same for every set of points, let's go ahead and do it for two different points. So let's say we'll do the rate of change for when x is 1 to when x is 2. Okay, so x is 1 and when x is 2. Well, when x is 1, oops, when x is 1, y is 1. And when x is 2, y is 0. So one thing I can do, again, I can just do my rise over my run. So I'm going down 1 into the right 1. So this, the rate of change is negative 1. Or I can do difference of my y's over difference of my x's, which is 1 over negative 1, which is also negative 1. So it works out the same either way. But as you can see, here we had a rate of change of negative 1, whereas here we had a rate of change of 3. So the rate of change is not always the same between all points on a quadratic function. So let's look here. Let's say to, I want you to find the rate of change from when x is negative 2 to when x is negative 3. All right, so when x is negative 2, y is 0. That's this point right here. And then when x is negative 3, y is 8. So the rate of change is going to be difference of our y's over difference of our x's. So negative 2 minus negative 3 is negative 2 plus 3, which is negative 8 over, that's not 8, negative 8 over 1, which simplifies to negative 8. So the rate of change here, and again, that should look like it. We're going, oops, we are going down 8, and then we're going to the right 1. So negative 8 over 1. Now, also, you can find rate of change when just given the actual function. So if I said here that I wanted you to find the rate of change from when x is, 2 to when x is 3, what you're going to do here is you're going to plug these points in. And I'm going to actually figure out what my points is, mean what my points are, meaning if x is 2, what is y? And then when x is 3, what is y? So um, to do that, I'm going to have to plug them in. So I'm going to find out what f of 2 is, and that is 3 times 2 squared minus 6 times 2 minus 2. I'm just replacing all of these up here with 2 so that I can figure out what my y is or what my f of x is. Um, so then that means that f of 2 is, this is 4 times 3 is 12, minus 12 minus 2 means that f of 2 is negative 2. And I didn't mean to do it through there. All right, now let's do um, f of 3. It's going to be 3 times 3 squared minus 6 times 3 minus 2. So f of 3 is 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Minus 18 minus 2. Uh, 27 minus 18 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. So it is 3 comma 7. So to find the rate of change, you're actually going to have to subtract. So I'm going to do difference of my y's over difference of my x's. So I end up with negative 5 over negative 1, which simplifies to 5. So the rate of change here for this function is 